Hi there, welcome to Class Notes. Today we're going to dive deep into using Google Sites to create a digital class hub. You can use Google Sites alongside with your learning management system, such as Google Classroom, to present and store information in a personalized way. Today we're going to be creating four pages. So without further ado, let's get started and create a blank new site. The first thing that we're going to be adjusting is the page title and the site name. So I'm going to call my one Miss Nicole's class and I'll copy that for the site name as well. Notice that when you hover over the site name, you can also add a logo as well. Changing the site name also allows you to change the document name as well. So clicking there, it will automatically change. Let's also add a logo. This is definitely optional. And I've got a Bitmoji image here. Notice that you are also able to change the nav bar. So when we go to navigation, the default is at the top here. So if you add new pages, they come up on the top panel on the right hand side. I'm going to change this to the side. Okay. We can also change our header image. We can select a image from the gallery. There we go. Select and it will automatically adjust for readability. Okay. Next, we'll just publish the site, so make sure that we have a link. That's fine, and I'll just press enter. You could have also changed it to your own unique name as well. That's okay with the default one that came up. And here we go, just checking that everything looks good there. So this is the home page for students. The first thing that I'm going to add is a text box. Welcome to our class website. I'm going to make that a title and center align that. I'm going to change the theme as well. Okay, so that looks quite good. So I inserted manually here by clicking one of the options on the panel over here. You can also double click and then there's a couple of options you can use. So you can add a text, image, upload and embed as well. So for the next section, I'm going to have text and I'm going to introduce some students. Have heading and I'm going to choose a layout for this. So there's a couple of cool layouts for here. And I've got some Bitmoji images that I'd like to use for students. You can ask students to send you their Bitmoji images or you can create it for them. It's up to you, but I think it gives it a nice personalized feel to the class. I think you need to yep, adjust that. So you can press crop to just move the image around as well. Okay, and just a couple of sample names. Okay, and then I'm going to add a new section, so add text, and the next thing I'm going to also add is um, maybe additional resources. So have a think about what you want the students to have easy access to, I would put all that on the home page. So additional resources, I've got a virtual library for students, so I'm going to go ahead and add that, it's a slide. And all the available slides here, they must be in your Google Drive as well. So virtual library, here we go. I just double clicked. We can also press insert there as well. And the good thing about embedding Google Slides into Google Sites is that the links become clickable. So I'm going to make this full size if possible. Okay, no. Maybe I'll just make it super wide. Okay. And I'll show you how that looks in a moment. But before that, the last section I'm going to have is contact teacher, where I'm going to have a section for emailing. Heading was. Okay. Okay. 
nice to just have an email address there for students. Let's hit publish to take a look at what the final published page looks like. Hop over here and it might take a moment to come through, but we'll just refresh a few times to see if the updates are there. Okay, so here we are on the home page. You can see our logo up here. Welcome to our class site. And some students here. And here we've got our virtual library. So here are some additional resources. Click on the white books around the room for some resources. So once we click on these, it goes straight to the link. So it's really nice there, especially if you've got some Bitmoji virtual rooms, definitely include that in your sites. So we're done with the homepage, let's keep going. So we'll close this one. We're going to add a new page. So over here on the right, let's go to pages and there's a plus sign here for adding a new page. The next page is going to be class content. So I'm going to have term one, lessons. And in term one lessons, the first thing I'm going to have is a layout and I'm going to introduce the term one topics. I just have them in a bullet form. So shapes, um, number, algebra, something like that, just to give an idea for what all of these lessons look like. And so let's go ahead and select a general image for this to make it quite visual. Let's go for shapes, insert, and there you go. Just a nice little intro there. And then I'm going to add a section for week one. Make it a title. And I like to also change the section background just to emphasize that this whole section is for week one. So I'm going to go for an emphasis. And let's say that you have some resources that you would like to put in for week one. I'd go ahead and put those slides in. So I've got a couple here. So maybe you want to have a Bitmoji classroom in week one as well. And I've also got um, just a PowerPoint as well. I'm going to go ahead and change the section background so that it's quite clear that these PowerPoints are specifically for week one. Okay. If I chose to do week two, then I would go and add text, week two. And for week two, I'd leave it as a white background or I'd even change it to another type of emphasis. That's completely up to you. Okay, let's say that you don't have your PowerPoints on Google Drive. What you can also do is um, have buttons that link to the resources that you want students to go to. Okay, so we can add a button. So let's say I've got PowerPoint here and it's online and I want to share it with students. You can go to file, share. We've already embedded it, but let's say we want to do a button instead. Let's go ahead and get a link that is view only. So anyone with the link can view and we'll copy that link. Try to avoid links that are able to be edited by anyone because it causes a bit of issues if you allow all students to be able to edit. So then we can go to, where was it, button. And I've got, um, let's just say 13th of July PowerPoint. And you've got a link to that, then that's perfectly fine as well. Just grab your link and put it wherever you want it to go. Cool. And students can go ahead and press that as well. So that's a few options there as well. Let's publish that to check out how it looks. Okay, let's refresh. I think it takes a little bit more time and I'm a bit more impatient. Okay, yep, so the nav bar is now on the side panel and you've got term one lessons here. You've got your Bitmoji classroom, you've got some PowerPoint links here. Okay, so notice that PowerPoint looks a little bit different from Google Slides as well. PowerPoint has a slider and Google Slides, you need to actually press 
to go to the next slide. Okay. And then week two, you just keep on adding content there. Okay, so that looks quite nice. Let's go to our third page, and the third page is going to be an assignment. Let's call it assignment one. Okay, and for assignment one, let's say that you've got some instructions. You can add a Word document or however you want. But for me, I'm just going to have, there's going to be some instructions here. You can duplicate this. So let's say that you have an attached rubric as well for students. Duplicate again. And then lastly, you'll, you have some additional instructions specific to submissions. So for submissions, let's say that you want students to submit on Google Classroom. Okay, so submit your assignment by the 23rd of July, something like that. You can actually add a button that goes directly to your Google Classroom link. Okay, so I'm on Google Classroom at the moment. Hop into Classwork and you should have your assignments over here. So I've got Term 1 assignments that I've already created. I'm going to go to the three dots over here and you can go and copy that link. Let's go ahead and add a button that leads here. So click here to upload your assignment. Okay. <laughs> and that looks quite good. You can center it as well. No, I'm just going to put that where it was. I think that was fine. Okay. And you can add any other resources you want. You can even make this stand out. So let's emphasize these two together. So what I wanted to do, I want to emphasize the submissions and the button. You can actually probably bring it over here as well. Yeah, okay, that's fine, I guess. All right, so it's two and one, or you can drag it over here and put it together like that. Okay. Cool. So then the last page that I want to do is a page for excursions or field trips. Okay, so I'm going to add a little bit of information about the field trip. Okay, whatever it is. You can add some images. Let's go select. And I just go for a quick Google search field trip. Cool. Just grabbed any. Okay, so you can make it obviously specific to your own field trip. And what I like is having a spot for permission slip, which has a little bit more detail about how students need to submit their permission slips. If it's okay with the school, you can also include a Google form. So I've got a form here that I want to include. And it's just a basic set of questions such as what is the name of the student? Um, do you give permission? Things like that. And I'm going to put those two together. You can emphasize that again if you like. It's kind of up to you. Okay. Um, Another idea is, let's say that your school does not allow for these types of permission slips, then you can also have like a Dropbox link or to a button where students can take a photo of the physical piece of paper. So just to give a record of the permission slip. Okay, so that's finished. Let's go to publish and take a look at our final product. So field trip, cool, and you've got some permission slip questions here, assignment, and if I press on that button, it goes straight to Google Classroom, which is great. We've got lessons, cool, and then you've got the home page, so I just went backwards there, and everything looks finished now. Thank you for watching this video. I hope that you got some ideas on how to integrate Google Sites in the classroom. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe to Class Notes for more videos like this in the future. Until next week, see you later and have a good day. Bye.